Now we're going to spend a fair amount of time talking about reducing inflammation. This was the cover story, Time Magazine, the secret, uh, or the uh, secret killer cellular inflammation. And I want you to forget everything you've ever learned about diet in the past. You know, back in the 80s, it was low fat, low fat, low fat, fat's bad. And then Atkins made a comeback, and so did the South Beach diet, and it was low carbs, low carbs, carbs are bad. Forget all of that, and I want you just to think about inflammation. And what you want to do is you want to eat foods that decrease inflammation, and you want to avoid foods that promote inflammation. And what are the, uh, what are the determining factors with regard to what foods promote inflammation and what foods are anti-inflammatory. The first thing is the type of fat. Saturated fat, and what's the other fat we're going to avoid? Trans, trans fats are very pro-inflammatory. And why, are, why is the trans fat pro-inflammatory? Because it's trying to get in that cell. It can. It damages the cell. That increases cell turnover. Anytime you increase cell turnover, you increase the chances of one of those cells turning into a cancer cell. So if you've got too much sun exposure, you get sunburn, you might sunburn, you might get skin cancer. So the trans fats are the big one. What I want you to do when you leave here today, I want you to go do a pantry purge. I want you to go in your pantry and read every label and when you see hydrogenated oil or partially hydrogenated oil or trans fats, throw it away. Everybody going to do that? Okay. So saturated fat and trans fats are very pro-inflammatory. So what are the good fats, the anti-inflammatory fats, which we've already talked about? Omega. The omega-3 fatty acids. So if you can cut out the trans fats, increase your intake of omega-3 fatty acids, that's going to help decrease cellular inflammation. The other thing is the glycemic index of a food. And the glycemic index is really how quickly a food is converted to sugar. So you really want to avoid sugar and anything that's converted to sugar readily. And what happens is when your sugar level spikes or rises rapidly, your insulin level follows it. And when your insulin level is above a certain point, then that is very pro-inflammatory. It's all about keeping your blood glucose or your blood sugar and your insulin levels within a relatively uh, narrow range. An interesting side note is uh, cinnamon. Have you heard about cinnamon now? You'll see cinnamon uh, extract and so forth. They were actually looking at the glycemic index of apple pie. And when they do the glycemic index, they actually feed uh, these volunteers and then they measure their blood sugar. When they fed them apple pie, they found that the blood sugar didn't rise as quickly as they might have expected. And after further research found that it was the cinnamon in the apple pie that actually blunted that uh, insulin response. The phytonutrient content of a food determines whether or not it's inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. And what does that really mean? So if you eat a food that has a lot of natural antioxidants, natural vitamins and minerals, that's very anti-inflammatory. So if you eat your leafy greens, which is probably the best thing you can eat, full of uh, all your vitamin E and A and so forth, that's going to decrease inflammation because antioxidants will... Um, neutralize the free radicals. Free radicals are things that you really want to avoid. Some foods have natural anti-inflammatory uh, compounds, particularly your spices and some of your herbs. The most studied spice is uh, turmeric, uh, very anti-inflammatory. Ginger is very anti-inflammatory. Basil is anti-inflammatory. So what you really want to do is you want to season your food a lot. I'm from Louisiana, so we do that anyway. So basically, forget everything you've learned about diet. Think, is this food inflammatory or anti-inflammatory? And you can actually go to certain websites, nutritiondata.org or .com, I'm not sure, and they actually have the inflammatory uh, rating for every food that, that you might want to eat. And I throw this in. I mean, this is kind of the usual advice. You would hear most talks like this. A memo just went out that smoking's bad. Uh, regular exercise. I love the Kaiser commercials where you make the world your gym and the guy's got the baby and you know just think in terms of burning calories throughout the day. Most of you could probably burn a lot of calories waiting in the doctor's office for the doctor to come in if you go to the doctor a lot. So you know I tell my patients I want to see you pacing back and forth before I come in. 
managing stress is very important in terms of aging and uh, weight loss, and you might ask why, but when you're under stress, chronic stress, what happens is your adrenal glands are putting out more of the stress hormones, and the main one is cortisol or cortisone, and cortisol is very uh, fat promoting. So when you're under stress and your cortisol levels are high, that can contribute to accelerated aging and uh, obesity. The simplest thing to do to manage stress is to learn some very uh, simple breathing exercises. Let's practice one. I want you to take your tongue and touch the top of your mouth. And I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose very slowly and then hold it for a count of seven seconds and then exhale through your mouth very slowly. And if you do that, it's amazing that some, once you practice that, you do that just a few times, it's amazing how relaxing that is. And really what you're doing is you're activating your parasympathetic nervous system, which is the branch of your autonomic nervous system that's very calming. So you've got the sympathetic nervous system, that's the fight or flight response. The parasympathetic uh, branch is concerned with energy conservation. And if you do, do this simple breathing, that will help uh, activate your parasympathetic system.